taking out planes, trains, tanks. I'm not going to even think about the submarines. <laughs> What's up you guys? My name is Alex Hampton and today I'll be giving you my review of the F9 Fast Saga movie or Fast and Furious 9 or insane, ridiculous, bullshitty action. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You know that I'm talking about Fast and Furious nine but before we get into this review if this is your very first time ever watching any of my videos hit that subscribe button then hit that like uh that bell right next to it that way you get all the notifications of every time releasing a video here on my youtube channel we are also on patreon so go to our patreon page we have three tiers on there support us on patreon that helps us create more content here on youtube so let's cut this bullshit and jump into the review now, let me preface what I'm about to say. I am a Fast and Furious fan, okay? I love almost all of the movies. Like, I, I mean, I actually love all the movies, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, there's some hiccups, but I enjoy this franchise. Fast Five is definitely my favorite out of all of them. Um, but I really love these characters. This this was a movie that I was highly anticipated for. I mean, I've said it multiple times on my show, The Ass Alex Show. I've said it on other videos. I mean, this was a movie that I was ready and happy to see. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, when I saw the movie, I was actually kind of disappointed in the movie. The movie's not trash. It's definitely not trash. I did like it. There are some redeemable parts as I think about it. There are some redeemable parts. I did like it, but this movie was very disappointing for me solely because this movie solely relied on the insane stunts than the actual story of this movie. Now also keep in mind, you can make the argument if you watch the previous movies, a lot of the, the story narratives are actually not as cohesive, but if I have to be honest, if I watch the previous story narratives of the previous movies, they make a whole lot more sense in comparison to this one. But let's go ahead and jump into why this movie is so disappointing. Let me give you my redeemable parts first. I love the action. I love the 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 background scenes of you know getting to know dom and the relationship of, of, his, of his brother seeing that tension on screen was very believable and seeing the high octane action was amazing but what made this disappointing was the fact that they're they're doing things that ultimately don't make sense i've accepted the fact that they're going to go beyond physics when it comes to making these types of movies but if i'm being honest what really took me out of the movie, there's a scene in the movie where Tyrese's character, Roman, is facing off against 14 military guys who have machine guns and they're all shooting at Roman. And Roman finds a machine gun. He's like cornered in a, in a hole and he takes all of those guys out one by one with one machine gun and Roman is surprised at the fact that he was able to do that without a scratch. And even I said in the theater, I was like, how the hell did this happen? Like, I'm just like, I, 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 I like Roman, maybe, maybe Dom could get away with this, but Roman really. So I, that just, I was like, okay, I'll just accept it. That was just weird. how he took out all those people with one gun. I just, that just threw me off. And then there's a scene where, Roman Tyrese's character acknowledges that, you know, we've done crazy missions and none of us have died. None of us have ended up with a scratch. We're sort of invincible. Like they acknowledge the ridiculousness and the unrealness in this movie. Like the characters literally um, acknowledge the fact that this is bullshit. Like they acknowledge that. How do I how do we survive every time? You know, it's kind of like an ongoing running joke. Um, the whole narrative of this is of this movie is Jacob essentially getting back at at Dom and they're going against one another. And, you know, Dom, you know, let his brother pass because he he knew that his brother uh, killed his father in a, in a big racing accident. And I thought it was cool to see the tension on screen. But another disappointing thing about that whole scenario at the end of the movie, him and his brother, they forgive each other like nothing ever happened. And that seems to be a reoccurring thing amongst these movies. You know, Fast Five, The Rock was the antagonist. Now he's one of their friends. 
Um, when you look at Fast Six, uh, you know, it was it Jason Statham? No, it wasn't Jason Statham. It was Jason Statham's brother. You know, he he fought off against him, and now in Fast Eight, they're friends. And then you look at Fast Seven. You know, Jason Statham was the antagonist. Dom beats Jason Statham, and now they're all friends with one another. I mean, it's one of those things where I just can't seem to understand. What is the whole point of having these villains in this franchise if they're going to wind up being friends with one another each and every time? But another very disappointing thing about this whole movie was Han. Han is my favorite character of the series, but how they how they articulated how he got came back from the dead or faked his death was actually the most disappointing thing I've ever seen. And it didn't ultimately make sense at all. Because apparently Han, since Fast 6, was working with Mr. Nobody the whole time. And Mr. Nobody just faked his death. For me personally, that didn't sit well with me because I was just like, well, what was the whole point of Tokyo Drift and him dying and leaving like a permanent mark on, on that particular character? It just didn't make sense. Now, apparent, And also, apparently, he was watching out for a little girl during this whole time. I mean, again, narrative-wise, there's a lot of things from a story standpoint that don't gel well. And then the action, the insane action in this movie, it doesn't necessarily take you out of the movie a hundred percent. It does keep you engaged. The part I don't like about the insane action is they're going literally too far. And I, and I would think that I would never say that about fast and furious because that's what they do is go too far, but going to outer space I thought that was the line for me because I was just like, okay, this is not really cool. This is stupid. Like you, th th this mission requires you to go to outer space. Really? But ultimately, if I had to rate this movie, I would give it maybe a five out of 10. I did like the movie, but I have to say as a, as a, as the ninth movie in the franchise, I am disappointed in it because fast eight was great. Seven was great. Six was great. Five was amazing, like was the best. And then you have four, three, two, and one. As a franchise, I loved it. But to put a ninth movie on this franchise and the things that they do in this franchise, again, there are a lot of things that took me out of the movie and there were a lot of things that just didn't make sense from a narrative standpoint. So that is my review of the ridiculousness of Insane, of Fast 9, the Fast Saga. But what did you guys think? Did you guys see the Fast 9 movie? What did you think about the action? What did you think about the story? Just jump into the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel where you get all the updates of every time releasing a video here on my YouTube channel. Guys, we are on Patreon, so hit us up on Patreon if you want to support us there. Thank you guys so much for your love and support. And as always, you have a blessed day. <laughs>